picture is dedicated to every man in the United States Navy, from the newest recruit to the old boy, the Admiral himself. All hands on deck. Since the days of our first great naval hero, John Paul Jones, that command has brought the men of the United States Navy topside on the double run. Ever alert, ever willing, ever heeding the call of duty. These guardians of the deep are a bulwark on the far horizon, America's first line of defense. But before a lad's a sailor man and fit and able to tell a binnacle from a bosun, he's quite a lot to learn. The Naval Training Station for recruits at San Diego. Here, new recruits arrive every day. Young men from cities, towns, and farms, from every part of America. These boys over 18 years of age and citizens of the United States are entering a new life, their first day at the training school. All hands, out of the truck and fall in. Hey, hey, look. Yeah, it must be boat drill. No, no, that's not what I mean. The water. Is that the, is that the Pacific Ocean? Well, it's not the Atlantic. Yeah, in San Diego, but it couldn't be the Mississippi, could it? Gosh. All right, fellas, pick up your gear and follow me. You know, as soon as I get my uniform on, I'm going down there and take a close look at that ocean. You mean to say you never saw an ocean before? <laughs> no, I never saw any water to speak of. <laughs> well, we had a mud hole for the cattle one, but it dried up. Uh, my name's Potter. I'm from Kansas. Mine's Benson. All right. If you stick close to me, Kansas, I can show you plenty about boats. You see, I used to say I'm old man's got lots of times. I've been around boats most of my life. Worked on a coal barge on the Erie and shipped out of Boston on a tanker. I even sold peanuts on a ferry boat. Working my way through high school. No kidding. Yeah. All for one thing. Navy. Thousands of recruits building strong bodies. During the first few weeks, young men often gain from 8 to 10 pounds. Exercise and healthy appetites contribute to each man's fitness for the job ahead. So the old boy put me in dry dock. Practically scuttled, you might say. He didn't put it just like that, did he, Bill? Well, it's the same thing. Just think. Me, Bill Jennings, the best chief petty officer that ever upped an anchor, flat on my beam ends. A landlubber. It's disgraceful. Look, Bill, it's the same old story. We've been over it a hundred times. Whenever you get in port and find out you have to stay a while, you consider it a personal insult. Well, that's why I've said no every time you've been around long enough to ask me. A girl doesn't want a husband who's two jumps ahead of a flying fish. Joanne! Joanne, don't shove off in the storm. Joanne, darling, I... Those chins up, head, head up, eyes to the front, left shoulder, head, head, two, three, four. What do you think you're doing, Kansas? Pitching hay. Winner, head, head, two, three, four, five. Rest! The boys need a little rest. First few days are the hardest. Hey, 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 you sailor, on your feet. I said rest, not fall out. Look, there's not going to be much more of this drilling, is there? I mean, after all, I thought in the Navy... You'll be surprised, Benson, to find out how much training is necessary before you're sailor enough to go aboard one of them battle wagons. Good old ocean. Set my course by the evening star. Whistle me a breeze from a land afar. Whistle you what? A breeze. I got that out of a book. Pretty, isn't it? What is it? Poetry. Oh. You know what I'm going to do as soon as I get through drilling? This sailor is going down and take a good look at that old ocean. Excuse me, Mr. Shakespeare, but let me put you straight. Don't call yourself a sailor just because you got that new rigging on. And if it's water you're craving, well, we'll take care of that right away. Well, 
Well, maybe is that enough ocean for you? Yes, sir. Cheer up, Kansas. As soon as you're through training, you can send you close to the laundry. Well, my lad, you seem to know so much about Navy regulations. Maybe you can tell us the proper manner for addressing an officer. It's correct to address an officer less than the rank of commander is mister. Sailor's not required to salute when in uh, ranks or at recreation, indoors or out. Of course, uh, he should salute whenever addressed by an officer. That's right. Uh, of course, the chief petty officer doesn't ready to salute at any time. <clears throat> uh, hurry up and get those clothes washed and get them on the line. the direction and the speed of the engines, the wheel with which the ship is steered, the compass is the course and direction of the vessel. Not only do the enlisted men learn the business of being a sailor, but each man in the Navy can select a surprising number of other trades and crafts. Typewriting and secretarial work, photography classes are popular. Boxing instructions are every sailor's opportunity. If you would be a machinist, an electrician, a cabinet baker, the choice is yours. Radio and signal instruction is given by an expert. Earnest young men see in the modern United States Navy an opportunity to equip themselves for a real career. You know, I wonder if these fellows that ask the questions can answer them. Well, wait a minute. What's the matter? Here it is. I have to bring this book back to the library. You've been doing an awful lot of reading lately, haven't you? You can learn a lot about the Navy from some of the books they've got over there. Mm-hmm. The scenery's not so hard to take, either. Uh, that's what I've heard. Howdy, well, fellas. Hi. 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 Say, this is the first afternoon I've had off so far. You know what I'm going to do? <laughs> go on out of that good old ocean. Yeah, and I'm going to get me a rowboat, and I'm going to row all Benson. over that. Where's your hat? Oh, I guess I must have lost it, sir. You're out of uniform. Report to your company commander. Yes, sir. Carry on. Find them right over there, I think. Maybe he'll take you out in a rowboat, Kansas. <laughs> Got a match, Chief? No. Hello, Mr. Jennings. Oh, hi. <laughs> See you in the squad room, Dan. Yeah. You're a fast reader, aren't you? Oh, yeah. I, I'd like to take out that book on signals and semaphore. It wouldn't be too much trouble. All right. You're going to know more than the Admiral if you keep this up. Oh, yeah. Don't you ever take an afternoon off? Oh, there it is, the green one. Where? On the top shelf, the green one. Oh, yeah. Hello. Did you want something, a book, perhaps? Huh? Yeah. Uh, no. Oh. Oh, Bill, that was sweet of you. Oh, just a little trick I picked up in a raffle. Knowing how silly women are, I brought it to you. Oh, no, I... Well, Dan, I see you got your book. It's too bad some other people I know aren't more... Oh, no, this isn't the one. Here, I'll get it for you. The green one, see? Can't you tell a green book from a red one? <laughs> Thanks. Boy, here, let me have that. Hey, wait. Hey, where are you going? Get out of the ranks here. What's the idea? 
give me a good minute. Get out of here. Newspaper, go ahead with your work. Look here. Then we can all go deep sea fishing. Isn't that wonderful? Here, let me read it to you. Let me, let me read that note. Let me, look here. Look here. And listen, man, who wish to take advantage of the deep sea fishing trip now available? Must register the name with, with the recreation officer. Isn't that wonderful, fella? Isn't that wonderful? It isn't like going out in a battle wagon, but it's getting the old ocean under, isn't it? Good yeah. old ocean. Yeah. See the shark over here? No, where? Look where? at these right oh, Don't do that. <laughs> Boy, this is great. Wait till I write my dad about this. He'll want to join the Navy, too. See, isn't that North Island over there? Yep. That's North Island Naval Base, where little squawks of tender wings start sprouting their pin feathers and finish with wings of steel. Hey, fellas, look. Look at the battleships. <laughs> battleship? <laughs> That's destroyers. The little buggies that defend the battle wagons in time of combat. Isn't that a submarine over there? what it is. And that's a fine branch of the service, too. There's extra pay for that. This over here is the city of San Diego. That's where the boys play over the weekend. Uh-huh. Hey, Benson, there's your speed. You think you can handle it? That's for me. <laughs> well, boys, you better be getting ready. We're nearing the fishing grounds. Hey, I got a bike. Hold his head up. <laughs> uh, he got away. Yeah, he took your line with him, too. You'll find some more leaders and hooks in my kit there. Okay. Which one? The blue one. Hey, where's Kansas? I haven't seen him since. You don't suppose he fell overboard, do you? Huh? Oh, maybe step forward. I'll have a look. What's the matter, lad? Does it get you? Training station, San Diego, California, 20 August, 1940. Subject, training crews. One, two weeks from the present date, recruit company 55, 56, and 57 will embark on a training cruise. Destination, Hawaii. Signed, Henry C. Gearing, Captain United States Navy, commanding. Company commanders, take charge and dismiss your companies. Yes! Yes! I bet I won't get sick this time. Not on a real battle wagon, I won't. Did you hear that, Joanne? Hawaii, Pearl Harbor, and the moon shining down on Diamond Head. You're not weakening, are you, Bill? Huh? Oh, no. I'm going to stay here like I promised. This cruise wouldn't mean any more to me than eight bells to a mackerel. Bill, if I were a Navy man, I guess I'd hate to be in dry dock, too. No wonder those boys are happy. I was talking to Dan yesterday. Oh, so young Howell's been around for more books, has he? I suppose you helped him pick him out, too. Now listen to me, Bill Jennings. You're going to be jealous of every... Well, I think Dan's one of the nicest boys at the base. And I'll tell you one thing. He's old Navy. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. It's only that I've had the lad on my mind so much lately. And I'm just now convinced it's my duty to speak about him to the captain. Bill, you're not going to do anything to hurt that boy. That's just what I am going to do, darling. 
I'm going to suggest to the captain that Seaman Howell does not belong in the Navy. The long-awaited moment is at hand. The young seamen assemble their equipment for a final inspection before they board ship for their first trip at sea as Blue Jackets of Uncle Sam's Navy. No blade your razor. Two mistakes. Where's Dan? Medical officer sent for him. Medical officer? Sure hope it ain't measles. Time like this. You yeah. hold wrong and folded wrong. Two mistakes. Don't you know how to fold those yet, lad? No, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Can you read the numbers on this color chart? No, sir, I can't. You're right, Mr. Jennings. This lad is totally colorblind. That's a tough break, lad. Hitting the reef. But you know yourself you can't have fair sailing unless you're sound and ship shape. What would you do if you were watching the signal flags for the Admiral? The blue flag went aloft, meaning all clear. And you thought it was the red flag, meaning rapid fire. It'd be pretty much of a mistake, wouldn't it? Liable to scandalize the whole fleet. What I can't understand is how you managed to get in the Navy in the first place. All right. Memorize the color chart before I enlist it. Can you blame a guy for doing it? All I ever wanted was the Navy. Their last parade before boarding ship. As they march on the field, each man is happy that his preliminary training ashore is over. In a few short hours, only the far horizon will mark his new home afloat. Jauntily, they swing along, breathing deeply of the fresh salt air that blows across the parade ground. In its breeze, a promise of billowy waves and a white churn trail left behind. It's the last one, matey. No more parades. Step smartly now. What's the idea? Want me to report you for being out of uniform? What do you mean? That rigging you got on. Get out of your blues and hurry. Wait a minute, I don't get this. One of your ideas of a joke, Mr. James. I've been talking to the captain again. You're going on that cruise, Danny. He's going to make an exception in your case because of your fine record since you've been here. Well, what about the eyes? I'm to think of that when you get back. And me, the best chief petty officer that ever upped an anchor, I'm going to see to it personally that there's a place in the Navy for as solely and steadfast a lad as yourself. Oh, thanks, Mr. Dennis. Well, never mind that now. Get your seat back in your hammock ready for transfer. You're shoving off right after. <laughs> Tear out! I'm glad the lad made the ship. So am I, Bill. I know how he's feeling, too. He and the other boys. You know, it's a great thrill you get when you board ship for the first time. The deck rolling smooth and easy under your feet is solid and sound. Somehow it comes to you that it's more than just steel and timber. It's part of the nation. Yes, sir? When you're afloat, no matter what hemisphere, longitude and latitude don't seem to figure into it. It's part of your country, that deck. And then one night when you're standing watch out there all alone, under the blue sky with the bright stars shining down on you, you get to thinking of all those that have stood watch before you, under that blue ensign with its white stars, like the night. On down the line, as long as there have been American ships afloat, those decks have heard the steady footsteps of those who love and serve the sea. But their country, first of all. So to the American Blue Jackets, fair sailing always. 
as they carry the honor and tradition of a mighty navy over the waters of the world.